Hey everyone, this is Ryan here, and welcome to the next series on periodontics. And we're going to cover a lot of great topics in this series. And it's by far one of the most requested from my viewers. And it has a, quite a lot of questions on the Part 2 board exam, with 48 out of the total 500. And we'll cover each one of these seven categories in order, focusing mostly on treatment and therapy, which is as you can see, most frequently tested. So that being said, like all of my videos, I'm gonna focus only on the highest yield things you need to know for the exam. And while I'm gearing these videos for exam preparation, they can also give you a nice overview for clinical application and general knowledge. So what is periodontics? Well, periodontics is the branch of dentistry concerned with the periodontium, which refers to the hard and soft tissues that surround and support the tooth, including the alveolar bone, the PDL or the periodontal ligament, the cementum, and the gingiva. So before we can talk about disease, let's talk about healthy, normal tissue. And this is an excellent, excellent diagram that we can study from. And you can notice right off the bat, we have our four components of the periodontium, those being the alveolar bone, the cementum, the periodontal ligament, which is between the cementum and the alveolar bone, and the gingiva. So let's start by talking about the gingival sulcus, sometimes also called the gingival crevice, and it's the natural space between the tooth and the gingiva that surrounds the tooth. Now everybody has a sulcus. Everyone has sulcus between um, their teeth and their gums, but when it's pathologically deepened, then it's called a periodontal pocket, and we'll talk a lot about pockets throughout this series. Next, let's talk about the free gingival margin, sometimes also called the gingival crest. This is the peak of the gingiva, and it's a really important landmark from which you'd base most of your periodontal measurements. Next, we have the free gingival groove, also sometimes called the marginal groove, and it's a shallow linear depression on the gingival surface that demarcates the free gingiva from the attached gingiva. Now, it's more evident, this shallow linear depression is more evident in some patients than others, but it's an important landmark nonetheless. If we go a little bit further down, we'll get to the mucogingival junction, which is exactly what the name suggests. It's a junction between the attached gingiva and the alveolar mucosa, hence mucogingival junction. And if we were to go a little bit further down beyond what this diagram shows, and we said, we have this here, and then the lip would be somewhere over here. If we added in a couple more components to really flesh out this diagram, we'd have what's called the vestibular fold at the bottom, which would be the transition between the alveolar mucosa and the labial or buccal mucosa, depending on if you're near the lip or the cheek. So the free gingiva is called free because it's not bound down, while the attached gingiva is firmly attached and bound down to the underlying bone. And the mucosa is, once again, not bound down. And these were important considerations, particularly for oral pathology, where some lesions appear on bound tissue while others do not. And also note that the free gingiva and the attached gingiva, all throughout here, are keratinized, while the alveolar mucosa is not keratinized. So the free gingiva is keratinized, but not bound down. The attached gingiva is both keratinized and bound down, and the alveolar mucosa is neither bound down nor keratinized. So I think this gives a really, really nice overview of the normal periodontium, all the different components, and how they're characterized. So now let's talk about periodontal disease, when there's some problem with the periodontal apparatus. 
So periodontal disease is, again, where there's some issue going on with the periodontium. And microbial plaque is generally considered the initiating factor. This is super important. Microbial plaque, also known as biofilm, is the accumulation of bacteria in a film layer on the tooth surface. And this could absolutely be an exam question where this is generally considered the initiating factor in periodontal disease. So three states we have, periodontal health, there's no inflammation, no PDL or bone destruction. Gingivitis is where we have inflammation, but we don't have any tissue destruction. And periodontitis, or some synonymous with periodontal disease, is where we have inflammation and we have PDL and bone destruction, which is known as CAL, and we'll talk more about this in a later slide. So let's talk a little bit about pathogenesis. And I'll say this over and over again, but periodontal disease is all about an interplay between bacteria and the host. So we have step number one, microbial challenge presented by subgingival plaque bacteria. And again, notice how plaque is the initiating factor. So plaque bacteria challenge the host by presenting things like lipopolysaccharide, antigens, and other byproducts. As a response, the, we have an upregulated host immune inflammatory response. So in other words, the host responds to this microbial challenge by upregulating and sending all of these disease-fighting white blood cells to the site of infection, which causes inflammation redness, swelling, things like that. So this alone was our definition of gingivitis, inflammation without PDL and bone destruction. But if this challenge stays for an extended period of time, if it's chronic, or if it's particularly potent, if it's aggressive, then we get tissue destruction, which is our definition of periodontitis, inflammation with PDL and bone destruction. In effect, and this is how I think of it, the body is retreating the bone away from the plaque in order to protect itself. The great paradox is that the body is destroying itself in order to protect itself. And that's periodontal disease in a very simplified nutshell. And we'll cover a lot more of the specifics later in a video just on pathogenesis. All right, so tooth exam. This is not just important in periodontics, but all of dentistry. But I wanted to throw in these terms because they're very important and absolutely will appear on the board exam. So erosion is caused by acidic foods or beverages or gastric acid. So erosion is all about acid. Abrasion is where you have loss of tooth structure by mechanical wear. This would be like if you were using a hard bristled toothbrush and you were doing so very aggressively and abrading to structure away over time. Attrition is where you have occlusal wear from functional contacts with opposing teeth. This is particularly evident with patients with bruxism, clenching habits, they'll get occlusal wear and incisal wear over time. Abfraction is the loss of tooth structure in cervical areas due to tooth flexure. This can also be a a byproduct of something like attrition or bruxism or clenching where the teeth are being flexed and lost and lose some tooth structure in their cervical areas over time. And hypersensitivity can be the result of exposure of dentinal tubules in the root surfaces. This is something that a lot of patients have concerns about and things like sensodyne or fluoride uh, products can be used to help uh, treat hypersensitivity in some cases. All right, so after we do a tooth exam, we're doing a periodontal exam, which is particularly important, of course, for periodontics. Now, these are the three most objective periodontal measurements, and they all have handy three-letter acronyms. So we'll start talking about the probing pocket depth, and I mentioned pockets before. This is what they are. They're measured from the gingival margin to the base of the pocket. Here you see a periodontal probe 
This one is measuring in increments of three millimeters. So if we measure from the gingival margin or the gingival crest to the base of the pocket, you can see that this is three millimeters, six millimeters total for the pocket depth. So our probing pocket depth would be six millimeters. Next, we have clinical attachment loss, or CAL, which I also mentioned previously in this video. This is measured from the CEJ, the cemento enamel junction, which is a fixed point on the tooth, to the base of the pocket. Now, in this image, and this is not always the case, the CEJ is at the same part as the gingival margin. So if we measure from the CEJ to the base of the pocket, we're once again going to get a six millimeter measurement. So our cal is six millimeters. And bleeding on probing or BOP is actually the best measure of inflammation in periodontal tissues. And this is when you go, you probe a site, you're going to make a measurement for your PPD and your cal. It's bleeding a little bit or maybe a lot. However much, if it is bleeding, then we have a positive recording of BOP. So we would say if the patient had been bleeding from the site after we probed, then we would say there's a positive BOP at the site. All right, so let's do a couple more examples. We've already talked about the middle example that was in the last slide. We had our PPD of six, our CAL of six. Let's talk about this one next. So if we were to measure again, let's start with the pocket depth from gingival margin to the base of the pocket. So let's say that would be about four millimeters. Now, how about the clinical attachment loss though? The CEJ is a fixed landmark and it's actually in the same place as it was in the middle example. And the base of the pocket is in the same place as it was in the middle example. So if we were to measure from CEJ to the base of the pocket, we'll get that same six millimeter measurement. Now, another equation that can sometimes help with some of these examples is clinical attachment loss is equal to the probing pocket depth plus the amount of gingival recession. So like in this example, we had our pocket depth of four millimeters and you notice there was two millimeters of gingival recession where we had exposed root surface. So if we add four plus two, we get six millimeters of clinical attachment loss. Now for the example on the right, this one's very different. And we actually have some swelling of the gingiva and there is this almost negative recession. So let's do our probing pocket depth first. If we went from gingival margin to the base of the pocket, that would be about nine millimeters. But now how about clinical attachment loss? Well, you might have noticed the CEJ is in the same exact spot as it is in these two examples, as is the base of the pocket. So the clinical attachment loss is going to be the same. We have a pro probing pocket depth of nine, clinical attachment loss of six. Now you could also, this equation works for all three of these examples. You could use it on the right example, and you'd say the pocket depth is nine millimeters, there's negative recession, it would be negative three, and you'd get your six millimeters. It's a bit more roundabout in that example, but it can be handy to keep in your back pocket. Now these are some additional periodontal measurements. We have gingival recession, which we've talked about. This is measured from the CEJ to the gingival margin, and you have exposure of root surface due to apical shift of the gingival margin. Alveolar bone loss is a radiographic measurement, which we'll cover in the next video, but it's not quite reliable, as we'll soon see. Separation indicates large number of neutrophils in the pocket. This is the expression of pus from a pocket uh, on measurement. Mobility could be due to the loss of periodontal support, traumatic occlusion, or the combination of both. And furcation involvement would be bone loss at the branching point of a tooth root. And we'll talk a lot about furcation in our next video on classifications. And finally, oral exam is important too, talking to the patient about their home care, how much they're brushing, how much they're flossing, and if they're doing it properly. And you can measure this by local factors like the presence of plaque and calculus. Inflammation is something we're looking at based on redness, swelling, and bleeding on probing. 
and destruction of periodontal tissues. We measure by the probing pocket depths, the clinical attachment loss, alveolar bone loss, tooth mobility, and furcation involvement. So that's it for this first video. I hope you found it very helpful in starting our journey into the world of periodontics. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you all in the next video.